Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing some work to this Kubota Zero Turn. Um, this model is a Z726X uh, and it features the Kawasaki FX801 engine. Uh, today's job is we're going to be changing the hydrostatic fluid and filters on both of these uh, trans axle units. Um, this particular machine uses Parker, I believe there are 16cc pumps but they're integrated, so that's wheel, motor, and pump combined into one unit. Um, so I don't know when it was done last. I just got this machine, so I'm gonna tackle it myself. Uh, so first word of advice, um, before you get into this, make sure you have all the tools and things ahead of time, because uh, if you don't have the right tools or oil or filters, uh, your machine could be down. So I've already went ahead and I've gotten filters, um, and I've got, seven liters of the proper hydrostatic fluid for this mower um, and what else I want to make sure I had is reading the manual on how to do this job <clears throat> it says you're going to want to it's going to be hard to see but down in here now that there is the breather port um, so you won't need that until you're filling the machine back up with oil, but uh, I wanted to make sure that I had the proper tool to do it. Um, so in this case, two long extensions and a Torx 50. Uh, I figured I would double check that before I tear into it. But uh, yeah, so we'll uh, do a step by step on how to do this. Um, so first things first, you're going to want to support your mower. Uh, get it up off the ground so you can access it. So integrated pumps, I'm gonna have two drain pans. So we're gonna start by uh, throwing a drain pan under. We'll loosen the oil pan bolt, or sorry, hydraulic oil pan bolt. And we'll start draining the fluid out. Um, once we start draining the fluid, I'll crack the expansion tank uh, caps and that will help the fluid flow out a little bit quicker so let's go ahead and get started okay so first thing I'm going to start with is uh, cleaned up any loose debris that's uh, in and around the drain plug itself now it's hard to see but the drain plug bolt is under this bracket so I'm just going to go ahead and wipe everything clean I have to apologize for my bad uh, angles. Kind of hard under here. But I'll just get that all nice and clean. Now, to loosen this oil drain bolt, uh, I used a, a slim profile 11 16 ratchet. Just grabbed a hold of it, cracked it loose. So there's your drain bolt there. Like I said, uh, 11 16 cracked it loose. So we'll get our drain pan in position. It's probably going to make a nice mess. You know what they say, get them, break a few eggs to make an omelet. Nice and gently, don't want to lose grip on that bolt. And there she is. Okay, so now that that's draining, we're going to go up on top and we'll empty the, or sorry, we will open the expansion tank cap. This one here. That should help it flow out just a little bit quicker. And as you can see, she's coming out real nice now. So surprisingly, that oil doesn't look too bad, but uh, 
Like I say, I don't know when it was done last, so I do not want to mess around with it. So we'll give this a minute to drain, and uh, we'll do the other side. All right, now um, the oil is almost completely drained. Um, we'll let it uh, drain it a bit more, but the next step is going to be to remove the transaxle filter. So it's hidden up here above the axle, as you can see. Um, something to note is it is actually a plastic um, bolt attachment. So it doesn't take much to crack or break. Uh, so I'm going to be very careful to remove it and install it, especially installing it. Uh, but for this model, uh, a 24 mil fits right on that oil filter like that. So I'm just going to use an extension. Try and hold this and do this at the same time. Again, very careful. Oh, there she cracked loose. Once you got it cracked loose, I'm going to remove the ratchet. Let's see if I can't do this by hand. Cracked loose, but it's still a little tight. So I'll put the ratchet back on her. So this entire filter is basically plastic, threads, everything. So I'm trying to be extra delicate with it. There, now we can unscrew it by hand. And there is our used oil filter. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm just going to take a second and uh, get this off. I'm going to clean up the area and uh, we'll go about reinstalling the drain bolt and a new filter. Okay, so we have the old transmission filter removed. Um, <clears throat> like I said, it is a plastic uh, bolt head, so you just have to be very careful. Um, so on my particular model, a 24 mil socket um, pulled it right off. Um, now to reinstall, I'm just going to take a little bit of oil <clears throat> and put it on this here rubber o-ring and then we'll clean up the threads and we'll get this reinstalled. Okay, so we have our new oil filter installed. We're just going to tighten this down by hand until she's good and snug. <clears throat> and we'll put our 24 mil back on. Now, manual calls for 9.6 to 11.4 foot-pounds, so that is not very much. So I am literally just going to snug this up just a little bit. Just want that uh, gasket to seat nice. So it is snug, but not very, not snugged up very much. All right, so next thing is we're gonna go ahead and clean up our drain bolt. Uh, we'll wipe the area nice and clean uh, before reinstalling, and we'll get that back in. Um, if you look close, let's see if I can focus, there is a lot of dirt and debris on that, so we'll get that cleaned up really well, put that back in. Um, so like I said, I went ahead and I just cleaned up all the plates around the filter cartridge. Um, I've cleaned around the drain bolt, um, so I've cracked it loose. Like I said, on this model, it was at 11 sixteenths. So we'll carefully pull this out. Get all this nice Parker fluid drained. Uh, there, just like that. All 
right. So far, so good. Uh, so manual says this machine will hold three liters or 3.2 quarts per side. So I went ahead and I got seven quarts because um, they're sold in quart bottles. Um, what was also interesting was this particular Kubota zero turn in the manual states that it needs special 700 series hydraulic oil. Um, so I went to my local dealer and I spoke to a mechanic, the parts lady and a salesman and they all pointed me towards, I'll show you here. Uh, this stuff, it is a Parker HT1000 premium hydraulic fluid. Uh, they said it is specially formulated for uh, the Z700 series, or at least um, it works very well in it. So it is the premium stuff. Um, you know, the mechanic was saying that the Z100 series just takes like a 2050 weight oil. But uh, this being one of their bigger, more commercial grade models, um, having the bigger transmissions, uh, I guess they use the premium fluid. That's okay. Unfortunately, um, $20 a quart. But, like they say, it takes money to make money. All right, so we'll continue to let that drain. Actually, we'll crack the cap. That should help it flow over a little better. Oh yeah, that helps. Yeah, once that slows down, we'll get into pulling that cartridge out. So like I said, uh, just for preventative maintenance, I went in here and cleaned this whole deck up real nice. So when you go to reinstall the filter, you're not installing any grass or dust or dirt. I'm actually going to do it again. Clean around the old filter. Last thing you want to do is introduce grass or dirt into your uh, machine. That looks pretty good. So, we we'll slap our 24 mil onto our transaxle filter. Yeah, so it's not on there very tight, but supposed to be, like I say, it's plastic. Okay. Oil's almost drained. Pull this out by hand. that old filter um, so right away noticeably the new filters are white but uh, so yeah it's hard to tell how many hours are on this uh, the machine has 439 hours on it now so just preventative maintenance now that I'm the owner of it I want to make sure that it's done I'll feel better knowing that it's done and I d wouldn't mind running it so hard so, we'll go ahead, we'll let that finish draining, and we will get our new filter all primed and ready. Okay, so just like the other filter, uh, we're going to prime that gasket. Just make sure your hands and fingers are clean. A little bit of oil on there. So not only will that help it seal, but I think it will also make it a little easier to remove next time that you do service. Alright, so now we got that, we'll get this reinstalled. Alright, 
there. So that's uh, a filter cartridge on both sides, uh, drain pan bolts. And we'll wipe the area clean. Great. And now we're on to the fun part, bleeding the system. Okay, so the next step on uh, changing the hydrostatic fluid on this Kubota Zero Turn is going to be adding the oil. Um, before adding any oil uh, whatsoever, the manual calls for loosening the breather port. So I tried to show at the beginning of the video, but um, it is down on top of the transaxle. Give me a second and I will give you a close up. Okay, so on this particular model, it's going to be hard to see, but I'll try and zoom in. Um, this little round hole is actually the breather port for the transaxle, or transmission, hydrostatic, whatever you want to call it. Um, so before adding any oil, what I'm going to do is crack these breather ports open three full turns. And what that does is it makes sure that uh, no air can stay trapped in the system. Uh, when you're adding fluid. So we'll go ahead and we'll crack these loose. <clears throat> so to get at it, I had to use double extension, like I said, with a Torx 50 on the same to the other side. These were on there pretty tight, so we got a little cheetah bar. As you can tell, it was on there pretty snug. So, three full turns. Make sure. Alright, so now that we have our breather ports loosened off, three full turns, um, I'm going to lower the mower and uh, manual calls to add fluid until you see oil start to come out of that breathing port and then you stop. So, we'll start by lowering the mower. Okay, so we're ready to add our oil. Um, we lowered the mower, uh, it's on a level surface. Uh, so like I said before, you're gonna wanna add oil to the expansion tank while keeping an eye on that breathing port that we loosened up. And you'll add oil until oil just comes out of that breathing port and you will stop. Uh, once you see oil coming out of the breathing port, you will tighten that up. So we'll go ahead and we'll start adding. Guys, uh, so what I've learned so far is uh, when filling your transaxle through the expansion tank, 
it is super slow to drain into the actual transaxle. Um, I washed the breather port uh, very, very close. I put two full liters in, um, still nothing. So I cracked the breather port loose just a little bit more. Um, I started adding a third and I didn't have any oil seepage out of the breather port until about three, sorry, uh, say 2.7 liters. Um, it then just ever so slowly started to creep out of the breather port. So I snugged it up good and tight. Um, I cleaned up the residual that came out of the breather port. Um, now this is on my model, but, uh, it could be different on yours, but, uh, the expansion tank drain valve that goes into the Parker transmission is super small. So it does take, I don't know, I'd have to guess at least 10 minutes to drain. Um, so I have three full liters into the right, uh, side of the transmission. Um, breather port is tightened it's cleaned up um, I put the rest of the third quart into the expansion tank it's very hard to read a level but what I did uh, crack this loose so I could see inside and I just took a screwdriver to the max line and uh, you could verify that it is at max now once we go to purge that could change um, so I have moved on to the second side um, so I've gotten two quarts into the expansion tank and it is draining. And it is ready for more. So we'll go ahead and we'll add our last liter. Okay, so two and a half liters and the transaxle is still not completely full. <clears throat> um, I've let the expansion tank drain completely. Uh, it's hard to see, but you can see the drain hole that drains into the, the Parker pump. So I'm going to go ahead and add another quarter of this uh, remaining quart. And here, I'll show you what we're looking for in this breather port. Maybe hard to see. So down in there, you'll see I have the socket already on it. But not seeing any oil come out of that yet. There, there it is. So, and tighten that up. Now, I don't know if you guys seen that or not, but uh, oil just started to pop out of that. So that was good timing. I think we caught it before it made a big mess. And uh, I'm happy with that. Uh, so that tells me that uh, <clears throat> Parker pump is completely full on the inside. So we're just gonna go ahead and snug this up. Um, I think it calls for about 10 foot pounds. I'm just gonna do a hand tight on the breather port. Okay, and we caught it before it made a big mess, so that's a bonus. All right. Yeah, the, uh, the right hand side, it took a second to tighten that bolt and uh, a little bit of oil escaped. But no big deal. Okay, so now we're going to put the remaining oil in. We're going to bring this back up, sorry, bring the expansion tank up to the full, full level. And then we'll get to the purging process. That should be fun.
Okay, so we're going to begin the purging process. Um, so ideally, this would be best done with the mower uh, off the ground. So we'll go ahead and we'll jack this piece back up. Just enough so both drive tires are off the ground clear. Um, so you want to verify that your expansion tanks are at the proper level. Uh, we just filled and did that. Um, now like I said, it's hard to see the sight line on them, but I did the screwdriver shadow trick uh, looking through the expansion tank and they are at the full level. So we'll go ahead and close this. Next step we're going to want to do is get under and we're going to have to switch these bypass valves to the right. Now, I've never had to do this before. But all the way to the right on that one. And we'll do the same on this side. Manual says go right for both sides. Let's see if I can show you. So there's your bypass valves. Um, it also says never to change those with the engine running. So we'll do that before. All right, so now we are ready to begin our purge process. Okay, so we're gonna start the purging process. Um, now that we have the mower off the ground, uh, the drive tires at least for now, um, the bypass levers are in the uh, neutral position, uh, both sides. So we'll go ahead, we'll start the motor. If I have the key on me, which I do not, but I'll get it. Uh, it says Ducati. Huh. Uh, so, we're going to do this very slowly. Um, key on. Choke up for now. Parking brake is on. So, we're going to start the engine at low idle. Uh, we'll release the parking brake. So, let's do that. Low speed idle. We'll release the parking brake. So this, this is the neutral lock position. We're gonna bring these in. I'll try and do this uh, one-handed, but we're gonna move the stick slowly to the full forward position. And once we're there, we'll hold it for 30 seconds. So here we go forward. Wheels are turning very slowly. Okay, so we are at full sticks. Let's count 30. One, two, three. Fifteen. And that's 30. So we'll slowly bring them back. Now we have our wheel stopped. We're gonna go slow into full reverse. So, very slowly, pulling the stick back. Still coming back, and they are at max backward position. So, we'll count to 30. Fifteen. And 
30. So we'll slowly bring them back up to neutral lock. Okay. Now we're going to shut the machine off and we're going to change our bypass levers back to the original position. So left for run, right for bypass. We'll do the same on this side. Where is it? There it is. So left for run. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to do this test again, but at high idle. So we'll park and brake engaged. Uh, we'll fire it up. So we're going to rev it up. We're going to do the same procedure. Um, slow sticks forward all the way to the full position. And we'll hold it for 30 seconds. Bring them back slowly. And let's do it reverse, nice and slow. Slowly bring them back to neutral lock. Idle down. Just gonna let it idle for a few seconds. Parking brake on. Always forget that. All right. So our next step is to check our fluid level in our expansion tanks. Okay, so we've done our basic purge on this Kubota. Uh, now we're just gonna check our trans axle uh, overflow. And it is just above the max line. Uh, so it doesn't look like it's changed much at all. Uh, the manual states if your fluid is at max level before purge and you purge and it is below the min to repeat the 
purging procedure. So, hard to tell, but that is still at max line for me. So, the purging is now complete. Um, so again, um, you do want to make sure that you have all the air out of the system. So, you know, just in case the fluid level did drop, it may indicate there still is air in the system. Don't be shy. Um, to re-purge, again, you would crack the breather ports, add fluid to the expansion tank just until fluid comes out, uh, close the breathing ports, um, fill your overflow tank to the max line, and do the purge process over again. Um, with air in the system, it will definitely reduce performance, so we don't want that. You don't want air in your system. All you want is nice, fresh uh, hydraulic oil. Um, so yeah, uh, this took me a little while, but I tried to walk you through step by step on how I did the hydrostatic uh, fluid change with filter on this Kubota Z726X model. Um, this is probably pretty similar to most other zero turns that you need to bleed the system um, but yeah so this is how I did mine I'm gonna give it a quick test around the lot here um, but hopefully this helps somebody out and uh, if you like this video feel free to like share subscribe do whatever you want to do and uh, thanks for watching guys see you next time bye for now